Watch him every morning on CBS Mornings. This week, he was live from Israel. That's right. We are talking with Tony this morning. CBS Mornings co-host Tony DeCopel is live in Times Square this morning. We are always so grateful, Tony, when you talk to us. Uh, I know our viewers love to see it, too, because you just got off the set a, a little bit ago and hopped back on for us. How are you doing this week? I'm uh, doing okay, uh, Kristen and Mary. Thanks for having me on. It's been a wild week, not only because of the Israel stuff, but today happens to be my uh, anniversary, my wedding anniversary. And yesterday, my wife turned 40. So we've been marking milestones. Yesterday was also the first day of school for my two older kids who were living in Israel mm -hmm. before this war started uh, and then came here and we were able to rush enroll them in a school here, so I, I took them in, helped them on the subway on and off. Um, so a very busy week, it just, you know, personally on top of the reporting uh, from Israel. And, and as I've said, uh, when I was there, the way I, I, I can't cover this story uh, without acknowledging the fact that I'm entwined with it. I have a stake in the outcome of this war because I'm a parent of two kids, an 11 year old and a 14 year old who live in the region. And I don't think that uh, disqualifies me. I actually think it sharpens my interest in the same way that all the other parents in that part of the world have a stake in how this turns out because it's intergenerational, the conflict. And if the adults uh, in the room and the global community don't figure this, or don't route Hamas out of, of Gaza, minimizing civilian casualties and then find some sort of way to piece together a stable existence for everybody there, then none of our children are going to have normal lives, by which I mean no trauma, war, or conflict, mm -hmm. just getting on with family and all the good things. So, yeah, I have a stake. We all do. Mm, Tony, we appreciate your transparency so much in this and sharing that, and we do really think that is important. As a father, because your kids were living in Israel, can you provide some perspective what it's been like just getting to them, uh, getting them here uh, in the U.S., and even walking with them through processing all of this? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the reason this is different for Israelis, that, you know, there's been conflict in that part of the world for going back to the founding of, of the state of Israel. And even before that, there was conflict. It's a very long history. Um, but, you know, the, what's different this time is the sheer number of rockets that were fired uh, into Israel. And, uh, you know, because the rockets from Gaza have happened for so long, there's a, uh, and because the Iron Dome is so protective, 95% of the rockets are intercepted in air. There are big explosions over the city, but no one's hurt. Because of that, you can kind of overlook it, but it is nerve rattling to have alerts going off on your phone when you're in class or in a grocery store. When I was there, I, I, I um, experienced this, and then you have to take cover. And, you know, attempted murder, which is what firing rockets in, a, in the direction of civilian life, of schools and hospitals and all the rest, and intentionally firing it at, at civilian life. That is the goal for these rockets uh, from Hamas. Um, that is that's a frightening place to be if you're in the wrong direction of that. So th this all began with this tremendous barrage of rockets. School was not a safe place to be, so school was, was they were supposed to come back from holiday. That didn't happen. Um, and then they were really kind of like hearing the sirens even when the sirens weren't going off. So at that point, I was like, we need to get out of there. Because then there's the broader question of, you know, if Hezbollah gets involved, that's this other militant group in Lebanon, or if Iran gets involved, they have bigger, scarier missiles. And if, if, they, if they so chose, they could really devastate Tel Aviv. And even when there's a, not a high percentage of that, there is a chance. And I don't, want, I don't want my kids in that area. So we were able to get them a flight to Athens first. Whew. They reacclimated a bit in Athens, which is in the same time zone as Israel, and then flew back uh, here about seven or ten days ago. Um, and then it, now it's a whole new routine, you know, like um, got, getting, getting things, get, figuring out what they need for school, figuring out what time they need to get, wake up in the morning. Like they've actually never experienced the fall. In, they have not experienced the fall in New York in eight years, which is how long they've been in Israel. So uh, there are great things about it. Like Halloween's going to be awesome, uh, but also it's just it's a change, you know, and I, I'm one of countless families are going through this. Yeah, honestly, the, the whole QC Live team watches CBS Mornings every morning, and we love you and Gail and Nate, and you were the first person we thought of um, when all of this started happening because you've talked so much about your kids. So thank you for sharing those stories. We also thought about, like, 
oh my gosh, Tony's in Israel. Like yesterday, Tony was here and now Tony's in Israel. And it gets us thinking about what these trips are like for you, aside from the personal piece, like how much lead time you have between finding out you're going and actually getting on a plane. And do you travel commercial and who's with you and what do you pack and all of these crazy yeah. logistics that come with these trips? Well, look, I don't know how they run it down there in, in North Carolina, but we, we definitely fly commercial up here in New York. Uh, you know, the days of, of private air travel uh, for TV correspondents and anchors, I, I don't know. Maybe that was 1975. Maybe Walter Cronkite could talk about the private airline. But, um, no, we definitely fly commercial. Uh, but, you know, whether it's going to Maui for the uh, wildfires or uh, going to the border of Ukraine for the refugee crisis there or Uvalde, which wasn't all that long ago, or Buffalo or the hurricane down in Florida – we get very little lead time uh, because the news happens. Uh, you start to follow it. It starts to gather. We start to have text conversations, maybe a phone call. And then the decision is made to go. And then you go on the next available flight. Israel was a little bit delayed because it is an official war zone. War has been declared and there's active fighting. The, the insurance powers that be have certain requirements. I had to go to something called hostile environment training which is, um, you know, I, I tried to tell him, I was like, look, I'm the guy who asked uh, Hillary Clinton about her husband's affairs. I've been in hostile <laughs> situations before. And they're, <laughs> they're like, no, no, it's got to be an actual, you know. So they, they put me in a classroom and I learned how to, I mean, it's pretty grim stuff. Uh, you learn how thick a tree needs to be to take cover behind mm -hmm. it if it's, if it's a, an assault weapon firing at you. You learn what part of the car has the, the thickest uh, steel or metal to actually block incoming uh, you learn how to apply a tourniquet. Um, and you learn how to apply this special kind of bandage that can staunch the bleeding if you have a, 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 a big sucking chest wound. Uh, I mean, it's pretty grim stuff, but that's the requirement just in case when you go into that part of the world um, or in a conflict zone like that. So that was new for me. Um, and it's there's no way you're not affected because you get a, a new and intimate understanding of just what's going on. And then you go there and you see the pictures and... You have to be emotionally engaged, and I'm, I think we're all disturbed by the pictures coming out of Gaza right now, and the questions of, of, uh, of, of the overall calculation, what Israel's going for, its mission, uh, and then the civilian cost. And that is a huge debate right now, and, and we're staring it right in the face, and no one wants to see that level of suffering. Nobody. Nobody, indeed, Tony. Um, you put it so well, and I appreciate the insight so much. We do. We had one question we wanted to end with. We got about 20 seconds. We wanted to end on a little bit of a lighter and a high note. I know you recently saw these AI generated photos of yourself for the yearbook and we wanted to know which ones were your favorite. Oh, they're <laughs> so good, Tony. They are so good. <laughs> I, you know, if I had a magic lamp, I always tell people that I, and I had those three wishes, I would choose to be a, a singer, songwriter, musician. And so I'd have to go with the Eminem because uh, I can't dance, <laughs> uh, I can't write music and I can't rap. But if I were him in that 90s version, AI, yeah, maybe. It is so brilliant. We loved them. We love seeing yours and Nate's and Gail's and Vlad's especially. Those were hilarious. <laughs> Tony, thank you for taking time with us. Okay. You know we love you here on QC Morning, and you are welcome with us anytime, okay? And happy anniversary and happy birthday to Katie. We wanted to pass Thank that you, ladies. Well. We love you as well. Mm. We appreciate you so much, Tony. Thank you very much. I'll tell her. Appreciate All right. it, guys. See you next time. You too. Bye. Okay, you can, of course, watch CBS Mornings every day from 7 to 9 right here on WBTV before QC Morning. It's the, We love it. It's the best. And such great insight, right? Like, yeah. just so what a nice sneak peek we get here into behind the curtain.